This will shock everybody, but Bolton are going to finish in no way, Theo. That's not going to happen. This team is going to get relegated and I can't wait to see it. Hey guys, Thogden here. Welcome back to our League One predictions. Now, we don't know if you guys want to see more content from this league, so let's hit 10,000 likes. If everybody watching this video actually decided to hit the like, we would do all right. We're not going to waffle straight into predictions. What's the first club? First club is Barnsley, Theo. They were fourth last season. They beat Bolton in the playoffs, but we don't talk about that. New gaffer in Neil Collins from the Tampa Bay Rowdies, Theo. They're going to be good this season. They're going to be good, but I question what it's like when you lose a manager who actually brought you a really good season. And the only reason you didn't get to the championship is because of a 123rd minute goal in the playoff final at Wembley. That's got to be gutting. It has still. Mads Anderson, a centre-back, has gone out to Luton for three and a half million. But in the opposite direction, Callum Styles there. Now this lad, he's coming for three and a half million. Born in Oldham, plays for Hungary. Sounds like a boy band member. They paid three and a half million. Callum Styles. Only one club paid Remember three and a half. Remember the name, Theo. Losing your club captain, though, is something different. Not only is he a player, he's got influence in the dressing room. Are they really going to be able to replace him? You know what, Theo? This is going to surprise you. They're going to win the league first place. What? Barnsley will win the league this season. Dad, they don't have Michael Duff anymore. How are you predicting them to win the league? They are, Dad, I'm not even sure if they get playoffs. You're a mug. The only player that will save that prediction is Luca Connell. The guy's an absolute gem. You've got him on a new contract. Everyone at Bolton hates him because of a few past issues, but he's such a baller. Should never be in League One. Blackpool of Lancashire yes. were 23rd in the championship last season. 70 years ago, they were winning the FA Cup against Bolton Wanderers, and your granddad was crying. When you get relegated in the 23rd, it's not going to be positive. A lot of change around is needed. A, a solid pre-season, which it seems like they've had it. They've got a key player in CJ Hamilton. He's an absolutely brilliant winger and could do damage in the third tier. What that about is true, Theo. But yeah. Jerry Yates has gone off to yes, Swansea for loss. nearly three million euros. That's a loss. But watch out for Blackpool. I think they'll be comfortably mid-table, 11th. But it was interesting that 11th? Yes. I mean, the bookies reckon they'll be way higher up the table than what you just said. They've got manager Neil Critchley, who's brought more success to that club than almost anybody else. You think they're gonna make the playoffs? I think they're gonna sneak it, you know. Ooh. I'm putting them in sixth. Wow. It's very difficult when teams get relegated and then you've got to predict them because they are on a lot of losses. That is the truth. But I think they'll turn it around. And now for our beloved Bolton Wanderers who were Come fifth on. last season and missed out in the playoffs. But this season, Theo, there's been a few ins and outs. Out go James Trafford to Burnley. Yeah. Out goes Connor Bradley back to Liverpool. MJ Williams, Kieran Lee. Does that worry you that we've lost four good players? Well, Kieran Lee's retired and I think he's replaceable. Connor Bradley, uh, unbelievable. And he's now in the Liverpool squad. James Trafford's playing in the Premier League, but we loaned in Nathan Baxter. He's another young, exciting player with loads of potential. Chelsea fans were writing to me like, he shouldn't be in League One. Like, you're gonna have a good year with him. I'm excited about that. Replacing Conor Bradley is impossible, but we did bring in a right wing back from Tranmere Rovers, who I've watched in pre-season. He's pretty solid. My most exciting signings that we've had is we've added to positions that we didn't have previously. Yes. We've never had that good wingers. Now we're looking at Carlos Mendes, who we signed from Luton yeah. Town. You ask your Luton friends, he's a brilliant player. Brentford fans, you know about Paris Maghoma, the midfielder. We've got him in the squad now. So him next to Aaron Morley is the best midfield in League One. We've got a goal scorer in Dean Charles. He got 21 league goals last year. Now he's got more creativity around him. Kyle Dempsey's at his best. The rest of the squad have had a good pre-season together. We're going to be better than last year, Dan, and that's the reasons why. Wow. Now, last season, we were the second best team in the league defensively. I don't worry about the defence. Nico Santos, yeah. Owen Toyle, brilliant centre-backs. we got Gethin Jones, we've got Declan John. I don't worry about no, that. Don't worry There's about goals it. up front from Victor, from Dion Charles, from Cameron Jerome on his day, from, uh, from John Daddy, if no, he's we, fit. Forget Cameron Jerome, Dad. Come on. No, no, he'll get you the occasional goal. What worries me, Theo, is a couple of things. Number one, I think the squad might have gone backwards. Number two, no. where is the creative midfield threat. I believe in Ian Everett. The only thing he's got on his mind is automatic promotion, first or second. Doesn't matter which one, he wants championship football. We have one of the best squads in the league to do so, and it's not old money. It's not like we come down from the championship with the players that don't want to be there. It's new money. We've gone down to League Two, we reinvested, we've got new owners, we've sold over 15,000 season tickets. The fans are going to be there from the get go, and there's a reason they are, because we're going up. This is my prediction first place. Wow. We're winning League One, and it, the reasons I've already laid out on the table. I'm, I'm very confident. And I respect your confidence, Theo. So you're part of the HMS Piss the League Brigade, are Absolutely. you? Absolutely. This year, League One is very uninspiring. There's a lot of weak teams. If you gain consistency and momentum, you can be up there. Overall, Theo, I think we're going to make the playoffs, but I think we've gone slightly backwards, or we've stood still in the transfer window. Sixth place. That is a joke. That is a joke. Are you... 
Are you pranking me? Where's Beadle? Where's Beadle? <laughs> yeah. Is Jeremy Beadle about? Sixth place. Let's move on before it kicks off. Bristol Rovers were 17th last season and the problem was 73 goals conceded very leaky at the back. Now they've yeah. got Joey Barton as their manager. He's been around for two years and five months. I never saw that happening. How are they going to do? The likes of Scott Sinclair are still there. There's some good players in there. Aaron Collins we both gets you a went, few assists. We both went to Bristol for the Rovers away match last game of the season, which we won, but it was a high scoring encounter. They've got some very good players, including Grant Ward, very yeah. solid midfielder. Good that they extended his contract. I just think you're going to improve from last year's 17th place, but finish around 12th. Not near the playoffs, maybe pushing towards that direction. I mean, we all know Joey Barton promised to be a stable championship club within two years. I don't think that's going to happen, mate, but a good solid year. I agree, Theo. I expect a lot from Aaron Collins, who is dangerous at this level of football. I'm going 14th place. Burton Albion were 15th last season. Yes. And again, it was a poor defence. 79 goals conceded, but they brought in loads of new players. It's hard to call this, isn't it? I don't know how Burton can be any more mid-table. They yeah. They're staying in the exact... Finished 15th last year, I've got them 14th. Maybe one improvement because of the Cole Stockton signing, who's a very solid player, scores goals in the EFL, but it screams of a mid-table finish. And I agree, Theo. Cole Stockton has got 100 goals in his career from 391 games. Pretty He's a good, good striker. He was good for Morecambe. I reckon 13th just place. Just don't score against Bolton, you mug. Cambridge United were 20th last season and just survived by one point. Theo, Mark Bonner, the manager, is the longest-serving manager in the division. Does that help? It does, but, I mean, look at Oxford United. They had a manager for five years and nearly went down with one of the best squads in the league. You can't face it off that. This year, it's going to be another relegation battle. They have to accept that. They don't have one of the best squads. They finished 20th last year and it went down to the final day. The hearts were racing for every Cambridge fan. But I'll tell you what, Cambridge fans, listen to me now, okay? The signing of Kachunga, ex-Bolton player. Now, I know a lot of Bolton fans are slating him online. I'm telling you right now, face to face, that guy is going to be brilliant for you. He's going to score goals. He's hungry to prove himself at this level. And I bet you he's going to score important goals. And in fact, this links to my prediction. I think Cambridge have enough to survive. And a lot of people say they don't. I think they do. It will be on the final day. And it will be a final day winner from Kachunga. Wow, that is a big call. Now, he does step up for the big games occasionally, but he is an enigma theory. If you look at his stats, they're really, really poor, but then he will be brilliant on yeah. his day. At Wembley Stadium, he ran the game. And the thing is about this club is they're miracle workers. You can't deny that. In April last year, they were given a 2% chance of survival. Yes. And here we are the next year, and they're in League One. So shout out to all the players for that club because you did something spectacular. And having said that, I'm going to say 23rd and relegation. What? I'm Off sorry, the there's not enough there, Theo. Elias Kachunga, I love the guy, but he's not going to get enough goals. Carlisle United were fifth in League Two last season, but they went up through the playoffs. Christian Dennis got 20 goals, so they sold him, Theo. That is disappointing. Imagine getting promoted from League Two and losing your top scorer. How are you meant to compete? He, I know, Owen Moxon, 16 assists last season. He was good at that level, but can a player like that step up? I've seen people call Moxon the EFL Kevin De Bruyne. That guy is an assist. <laughs> King and it's all talk right now because he might leave. Yes. If Owen Moxon leaves the club, they are relegated by February. Facts. They, I, I just don't know where they get the goals from. They've already lost him. I know they brought in Luke Plange yes. on loan from Crystal Palace. Now, Palace fans speak very high of him, but look at his stats. Lincoln last year, zero goals. Lots of new players coming in. Good luck to Carlisle, but I'm putting you rock bottom of the table in 24th. I'm sorry. And I can't wait to go up to Carlisle. It's just north of Lancaster, yeah. but you know what? 24th but place. But the thing is about this, what we aren't denying is the Brunton Park faithful are an incredible group of fans, and if anything can do it, it's going to be you guys. Charlton Athletic now, and a big shout out to Sasha Illich, the former goalkeeper. Yes. He sat on that terrace yesterday. Yesterday, right drinking there. beers with us. We're what currently a legend. We're currently in Montenegro. He lives out here and just loves it. What a guy, by the way. Always talks about that day where he made the save and kept them in the Premier League. Or was he getting promoted to the Premier League? He got them promoted to That's the incredible. Premier League. He's got a great life story. His story of how he entered Charlton. He flew out there because of the war in Yugoslavia. Went there, knocked on their door and said, I'm the best goalkeeper <laughs> in the world. They laughed at him, brought him to training to basically take the piss out of him. And he didn't let any goals in. That's how they signed him. That was football back in the day. Nowadays, that would never happen. <laughs> Brilliant. Good luck with your football academy, Sasha. But Charlton Athletic were 10th last season, Theo. Yes. Scored 70, conceded 66. That was a place to goal for goals. Mm. They brought in Alfie May from Charlton. Good signing. He will score, I think, 15 goals this season. And I'm, I'm surprised they financially backed that deal, considering the club is up for sale. They finished 10th last year. Do I think they'll improve? Absolutely. I'm very excited about the new boy, 19 years old attacking midfielder Tyrese Campbell. 
He's getting one year older, and as long as he gets game time, I hope Dean Holden does give him that because he's going to thrive. And if they don't keep him, he'll go for a decent amount of cash. I've got a good feeling about Charlton this okay. season. Seventh place. I think oh. they'll push for the playoffs. Well, let's shake hands. I agree for the first time. Seventh place, just outside playoffs. If they make it, wouldn't shock me. Cheltenham Town was 16th place last season, survived by nine points. But yeah. like we've just said, Alfie May and his 20 goals are out the door. And because of that, I'm sorry, straight to it, 22nd place. Everybody wants Alfie May and he's gone. They've lost their director of football, Mickey Moore. It's very hard to back them. Good signing, Curtis Davis, but it won't be a good enough defence to keep them from staying up. I've also got them in 23rd, which is, again, a relegation spot. Derby County was seventh last season and yes. are one of the biggest teams in the league. And the bookies think they're going to win the league. But mm. Theo, they've got the oldest squad in the league and the most valuable. The likes of Connor Hurihanna there. It's a hard one to call this, I think. Yeah, it's a tough one. They play high tempo, exciting football, 3-5-2. They're going to press you. They're going to get in your face under Paul Warren. Do you think that tactic's going to work in League One this year? I mean, they've definitely got one of the most expensive squads in the league with one of the best experienced managers surely everything's adding up for them to go and trump it. They're going to be there or thereabouts, Theo. Okay. I don't think they'll win the league. Now, David McGoldrick, I know he's getting on a bit, but he scored a lot of goals last season. He's gone, I think, to Notts County. I think it's 22 league goals, and without that, I don't know how they're going to do. I mean, you remove that, someone else has got to fill the boots. Who's that going to be? One thing's for sure, though, they've got key players in Max Bird, Louis Sibley, who are young. And no matter what happens, let's say you don't get promoted this year, you're going to be able to sell them for a decent amount of cash and reinvest in the squad. That's important. I think they need to bring more youth into the squad. Like I said, they're going to be playoffs fourth place. Yeah, I'm going to put them in, and let me just give you some basis as to why I've given you this reason. Derby have really flopped last year, finishing outside the playoffs. It feels different this year. They've, they've added to it. They've had a proper pre-season. They're comfortable. And one, the main reason I'm doing this, League One has weakened this year. Yeah. There are less big teams here. So, Derby County, I can confirm, I am predicting you, in second place, the other automatic spot, aside from Bolton. Exeter City of Devon, Theo, were 14th yes. last season, but actually scored more goals than Bolton Wanderers. You look at the squad list there, and they've got a couple of good players. Will Ameson was ex-Bolton, wasn't he, Theo? I yeah. like him. I wish Solid. he was still with us. Tom Carroll, my, my goodness. And watch out for Pedro Borges, young, exciting, attacking player. Uh, Portuguese, I believe. And look, he's a teenager, and he was playing with the old guys in League One, right? Everyone's going to kick you and go for you because you're the young guy. But he just lived with it. Gary Caldwell's got a big job. Can he sneak them into playoffs? I'm going to say no. I don't think their squad is good enough. But I think they could potentially go for a, a decent push. Maybe they'll be the surprise package this year. I'm going to keep them in 11th for now. What about you? I'm putting them in 16th place. So apologies Ooh, to lovely. Ryan and all my friends in Exeter. I think it's about survival this year. I'm Serious. not excited by that squad. Fleetwood Town were 13th last season. But the big question is, Theo, Scott Brown, will he be relegated? Oh, it's a big question. A lot of people saying they are. They're their owners facing legal battles, so many are saying they'll go down. I'm going to say no. I'm pretty confident with what's on the pitch. You've got Jack Marriott, who signed in January, and he scored eight goals for half the year. If he gives a full season of proper preseason, this is an opportunity to shine. They've got Josh Vella, who I think is highly underrated. He's a water carrier. He's a box-to-box -box midfielder. We know that at Bolton. We're seeing that at Fleetwood. So I think they've got enough in the tank to survive. I'm going 19th place. I agree. 19th place, survival. Leighton Orient won League Two last season, only conceded. 34 goals, only lost seven games there, but Amazing. how will they do at this level? Good question. They lost Paul Smythe to QPR, Lawrence Vigaru to Burnley. Some key members gone. When you get promoted, you want to keep them. What about the new signings then, Dad? Who's, who's really caught your eye? I would say Joe Piggott, Theo. He is okay. centre forward. He's coming from Ipswich. I think he's the kind of guy who's going to get 10 to 12 goals. That could be very useful. Jordan Brown as well, the 22-year-old midfielder. They've got him on a new contract and that's the exact way we, they want to take this club. Look, they've got momentum. They've got the fans behind them, the board. I think that's everything to take that ship away from relegation and put them into 17th place comfortably lower sort of mid-table stretch but if they even go further up the table wouldn't shock me we disagree on this one Theo because I'm quite confident and I don't know why I disagree with you and the bookies I think they might be 10th wow. I think they might surprise everyone and the first game of the season is Bolton Wanderers against Lincoln City Theo who were 11th last season hey, you mentioned it I wasn't even going to throw the stat up they've got the best opening day performances in all of the EFL and we're playing them first day. Oh my goodness. Now last season Theo conceded 47, scored 47, so defensively quite tight. They're mm. quite a good team, Lincoln. They are a good team. They play 3-4-3 fluid football. They've got some great talents like Ben House who's going to score the goals and Ethan Ahahon. I don't know how to say his name, but he's an exciting talent. I'm worried about when they play us, but it is going to be a pretty wet pitch on the weekend for the first opening match. 
Don't think it suits their style. I think we'll beat them. But overall in the league, I think they'll be comfortably 13th. They've got Tyler Walker's just come in from Coventry Theo. I think he's another player who can get into double figures. Yep. I'm worried about this opening fixture. I think it could easily be like a one-all draw or something like that. Lincoln City will be there or thereabouts, ninth place. Wow. Northampton Town were third in League Two last season. Theo, Sam Hoskins, 22 goals. But can he do yes. it at this level? That's the question. They've held on to him, which is something yeah. some of the promoted teams like Carlisle couldn't do with their top scorer. It's going to be a very tough year. Uh, I'm excited to watch how Sean Dyche's son, Max, is going to do he yeah. told me this summer when I was having a few drinks with him that he's he's playing for Northampton so hopefully he gets more game time excited to see is he gonna be as Brexit tackles as his dad we'll soon find out hopefully you weren't having too many drinks now this could be <laughs> a long season for Northampton Town it could be very difficult they brought in half a dozen free transfers and loan transfers I'm gonna say 21st I'm sorry relegated yes because four teams go down just, but yes. just well I'll, I'll base my prediction off this stat they have been promoted or relegated in five of the last eight competitive seasons. They're getting relegated. I'm very sorry. It's going to be six out of nine, 22nd place. I'm sorry. Last season, Oxford United had a horrible season and went 19th. But watch out, Beadle's about. You better watch out. No. Because James Beadle has come in from Brighton to what? Oxford. James Beadle, two million euros he's rated. Huh? He's come in. He's a goalkeeper. He's the next James Trufford. Wait, hold on, hold on. Let's just go one step at a time. Jeremy Beadle's about. That's James your joke. James Beadle. Someone's stolen your joke name. I know. No, I've done the they joke They named again. him after your joke. I know. Is he meant to be any good? Two million he, euros. That's Theo, one of the best players in the league. England Youth International. I think he's oh. 19 years old. Remember the name. Well, they needed some improvements after they've sacked their five-year reigning manager. Finished 19th with one of the best squads in the league. They still have the likes of Brannigan in the midfield. They've signed Josh McEachran to partner up with him. I remember him in his Brentford days. MK Dons got relegated, so they've, they've copped him. But the most exciting signing for me at Oxford United has to be Ruben Rodriguez, the Portuguese forward from Notts County. He banged them in in National League. Nearly got them, well, they got them promoted in the end, but he stepped up to League One. I don't know how they pulled this deal off. He's going to be ruthless. He's going to be a goal scorer. I'm laughing because Theo's just seen a ghost. He thought, he's, he, thought he saw movement behind us. It's a I haunted actually, house there. I actually thought there was a ghost behind us. He genuinely did. A, he's that a, is a, a staircase, and I genuinely thought someone was there. We're going to have to do VAR footage to check. Maybe they're here to watch Oxford United, but I put them in eighth place, which is massive improvements on 19th. They are a difficult team to beat, our Oxford United. Very good on the day. They've got Billy Bowden, who is excellent at this level, Theo. Billy Contribution Bowden. every other game. I'm going to say 12th place. Ooh. Peterborough United was sixth last season, but Theo, talk to me about Johnson Clark Harris and his 27 goals last He's season. He's the kind of player that every other team in the league wants. Every fan speaks of how they want him at his club. And when Peterborough have him, you forget how good he is. He's a goal scorer. And we saw that in the playoffs in the first leg, not the second one against Wednesday. Jeez, how that fell off. But the, the great thing about Peterborough, they've got a young, exciting squad. They've got one year older. They've had a solid preseason together under Darren Ferguson, who's a, who's a coach that has been up there before. Efren Mason Clark, the winger who shone at the playoffs. I mean, they held on to him, and he's so quick. You know, pacey winger causes real issues. I can't wait. I really hope he doesn't play against Bolton, I'll tell you that for sure. This surely is a team enough to get automatic or even playoffs. There's something going right at the posh at the moment here. They've got the youngest squad in the league, 22 and a half years old. It's now or never for them. I'm putting them in fifth. I think they'll go for playoffs again and with experience, they'll probably do better off. You know what? They have the ability to win this league, but I'm going to say third place. Port Vale were 18th last season. They yes. brought in Connor Ripley, haven't they? A goalkeeper from Morecambe. And they've got Jason Lowe. He's still there, the ex-Bolton player. Nathan Smith, a good signing. The fact they conceded 71 goals last year. They needed someone defensively. Slight improvements from Andy Crosby's side. So I'm going to go. They finished 18th last year, 15th this year. And I agree on 15th. Let's go. Portsmouth, one of the biggest teams in the league. I think they've been here for about six seasons, haven't they, Theo? Last I, season, they were eighth. How do the fans do it? They've got yeah. one of the best budgets in the league, one of the biggest squads. How are they not getting promoted? Colby Bishop, yeah. why are you not scoring? Are you, you're scoring a fair amount. What, what's going wrong there, Dad? John Mussino is now the gaffer. Good coach, did well at Oxford United. Will they go up? Well, Bishop got 20 goals last season. There's something going to happen this season. They will get promoted. They will get automatic promotion second place. I look at their squad, okay. and I think they will be very hard 
to beat. Well, it, when they finished eighth last year, it's very hard to determine it them going straight up. It was all about draws there. They drew yeah. too many games. If they turn some of those draws into wins, they very rarely lost. I'm going to say they missed out, though. You know I put Derby and Bolton in the auto spots. There's not a third one. If there was, it'd be Portsmouth, but it's going to playoffs. Reading were relegated from the championship last yes. season, mainly because of that six-point deduction, Theo. But this season, they've sold George Puskas to Genoa for three million quid. But they've got a good squad. They got some good money from that, but you do wonder where it's going with the current ownership problems. Last year, they finished 22nd with a points deduction. They actually have a good squad, but a lot of the players have left. So let's talk about who has remained. Well, the most expensive player in the league is Thomas Holmes. Yeah. He was once linked with a move to Nottingham Forest when they were on their route to the Premier League, and now he's playing League One football, and I just don't know how that's happened. McIntyre's still there. Ovi Ajeria, ex-Liverpool. Yes. Yeah, I remember we were speaking about him being in the Premier League soon, and now he's back. He's made a backwards move. Yeodom, Andy Yeodom is going to be one of the best players in this league. The problem is, I mean, you've just got relegated. It's very negative at the club. A new manager, a lot of problems there upstairs. Are they going to get straight back to the championship? Well, you've mentioned a very good centre-back partnership, and I think this is key at this level. Yep. We've seen that at Bolton, haven't we, Theo? Yep. And for that True. reason, I think Reading will push for playoffs. And in fact, I'm going to give them fifth place. Fifth place is very kind. Not even the bookies are suggesting that they're going to go straight back up. I think it's going to be tougher. Ruben Sellers is a great manager mm. and he was managing in the Premier League last year. A very difficult time at Southampton and it's not that much better at Ding. It's a very tough time for them. I think it's going to take more time. Ninth place in the pre... I mean, the year after that, if they do keep everything together, they'll go straight up, but it's too tough. How many goals is Andy Carroll scoring in the third tier though, Dad? Andy Carroll? Yep. The Andy Carroll? The Andy Carroll. Big number nine for Reading, Dad. Well, if he gets game time, I think he'll score eight goals. Shrewsbury Town were 12th last season, but Theo, they brought in 15 new players. Super Matt, super, super Matt, super, super Matt, super Matty Taylor is their new manager. Yeah. And the last time he had an appointment, he was with Walsall in February 2022, and he had a seven straight defeat loss and got sacked, so I don't know how he's going to do. Why are you chanting this, Theo? Have you become a monk? I'm a bit worried. I'm a bit worried. I mean, I love Matty Taylor. He's a Bolton legend, so I really hope he stays up. And that's the reason I've kind of got them in uh, 16th. <laughs> Do you know what, Theo? I've gone for 18th, but I've got to admit, I don't know most of these new players. So it's one of those Listen, where you, you throw a bunch of players The only thing I together. can say is if Matty Taylor's in the training ground and he's showing the players how to take free kicks, my God, they're all going to turn into Beckham because he, he was better than Beckham. He made Beckham look <laughs> championship. Stevenage were runners-up in League Two last season. And a funny thing happened at the weekend, Theo. We went to a game, Arsenal Tiver against Yezera. We were sat next to two Stevenage fans. I can't believe that. And now we're playing the Bolton going to play Stevenage soon. I mean, they've got a proper Brexit coach in Steve Evans. He's got a belly. He's probably <laughs> ate all the pies. There aren't going to be many cars pasties left when they go to Bolton. But I actually think he's got a good way, good style of play. He's going to keep them up. Not a good style of play. That's rubbish. He's got a style of play that will get them results. That's the right wording. Nathan Thompson's in, 32-year-old, full of experience. That's going to really bolster their team. I think they've got enough in the tank to survive. What about you? He's going to love the pies at Wigan Athletic, isn't he, Theo? Yeah. But, you know, for some reason, I agree. I think they'll just survive. Yes. 20th place. Yeah, they'll have determination. 18th. Wickham Wanderers. I yes. mean, we are the one and only Wanderers, but Wickham Wanderers were ninth last season they and they've got Ryan Tapazzoli It's there. tough, isn't it? Starting a season without Gareth Ainsworth is like having cereal with water. It just doesn't work. Wickham have to be with Gareth. It, it, it's it's going to be a weird year for them, Dad. Who has cereal with water? That's Nobody horrible. Does. So who has Wickham Wanderers without Gareth Ainsworth? Nothing. It doesn't work. Sam Vokes up front, Theo. Doesn't he, matter. He can bang a few goals. But they're changing their style of play and it won't suit him. Under Gareth Ainsworth, they'd lump it up to Vokesy. That, that would be the way that works. Now it's different. Yeah, Freddie Potts is on loan from West Ham. A few West Ham fans like him, Theo. I think their best player is their goalkeeper, Max Strayek. I'm excited to see. He's going to have to stop a lot of saves because their new style of play is very open. They are going to have a lot more chances and they're going to concede a lot more. I think they'll finish 10th. They're going to miss out on players. They've got a good squad, but not enough. Yeah, I think they're one of those tricky teams, Theo. I don't like playing Wickham Wanderers. Eighth place. Wigan Athletic. Boo, they were bottom of the championship last Last season but they had a six point deduction this season they've got an eight point deduction theory because of what's going on behind the massive killer scenes. massive killer they've had financial issues that's now being sorted out they've got mike danson who's come in he now owns wigan warriors of the rugby team and wigan athlete he's a wigan dot he owns wigan wow he's born in wigan doesn't live there why don't you live in wigan that's expect mike why don't you live in wigan that's my real <laughs> question because that's probably what the fans are asking he probably doesn't but like pies the fans don't care though they finally got financial stability if he's putting money into the club after seeing their transfer window i don't think he is not yeah. putting that much in takeover's complete though the main thing is they've got a club to watch saturday 3 p.m the fans can turn up that's great for them i don't care I, even as a bolton fan i'm glad they've got a club to support 
Takeover's complete. They've got debt settled. That's key. Bolton have been through the same thing. I'm really glad for them. Two managers through the midway of last season. Do the people, the staff, know how to run the club in the right direction? I'm unsure. They've got Jamie Carragher's son, James Carragher yeah. there. Yeah. Excited to see how he does, um, just because his dad's a bit of a legend. But look, they've lost what more? They've lost Derek Joaquin, Niambe, um, Max Power to whatever. He went to some Saudi club, I think, which is crazy. He's a good player, though, and many more. Are they going to be able to replace them and their business not being good enough for me? I'm going to go straight in, Dad, and say they're getting relegated. 21st back-to-back -back relegations they're going to lead to. Wow, but Theo, they've got Josh McGuinness up front. He was good for a exactly. bit of a legend for Bolton. Well, that's why, that's they've got Ben Amos Le against Bolton. You just called him a legend, Dad. Yeah, absolute legend. And they've got James McLean. He's the favourite of all the Bolton fans, And I isn't can't he? wait to see his face when they get relegated. Oh, that is very harsh. I think we're going to have got enough there. Even with the eight-point deduction, I'm going to say 17th place. Enough to survive? Yes. Right, well, that sums up this video. That is our 24. League One has continued. Please hit the like button because we're going to stop the League One content unless we get 10k likes. <gasps> wow, you do not want that to happen. Do not make it happen. Thank you for watching League One. We're just a few mugs. Let us know what's actually going to happen oh. in the comments below if you support Theo. them. And Dad, what's up? Theo, can I okay. do the thing where, yeah, where do the, I go do the, that? Do the thing, go on. That's enough from us. See you. Beedle.